Hello everyone and welcome back. I really didn't think I was going to do any more videos on the travel trailer until I headed down to Louisiana here, which is going to happen in a couple days, but uh, there's been one thing that I've been thinking about and Melissa's been thinking about and we just finally talked it over. And we decided to put in one of these observation systems in here because when I was pulling the travel trailer from Wisconsin to here in Minnesota, the hardest part is I can't see anything behind me and even with my mirrors on the side of my truck fully extended I mean you can see the side but you cannot see the back I mean you're just completely blind and it's a long ways back there so this afternoon here now I just got home from work a little bit ago the stove is going out here in the workshop I haven't even opened up that package yet the biggest thing we were talking about this we've talked about it a couple of times and on Monday we decided that I really would like to have that behind the trailer just for safety reasons or anything. You try to switch a lane of traffic from something that's 40, 50 feet back there and it makes it kind of hard to see, you know, any cars that are coming up. And so I needed it right away. I'm leaving this coming Saturday. Today is Wednesday. Luckily I have Amazon Prime, so we went on there and it was just a couple other things that were kind of hard to find. When her and I were looking at all the different cameras, and I mean there's a ton of them to choose from, we could find lots of cameras, but not all of them came with this mounting bracket. And here, as you can see, I mean, they're calling it a mounting bracket, but it's actually almost like a housing, the black piece that goes on the actual travel trailer or the fifth wheel itself. Apparently, most of the time now, when you're buying a travel trailer or a fifth wheel or a motorhome, if it doesn't already have a camera system on it, that bracket is already mounted on the, on the vehicle, and this one, it was not there. Another thing with the one I've got here, they had one that had a 7 inch screen, but that's a pretty big screen and when you look at the videos on it, they usually suction cut the, the actual unit right to like the windshield itself and it kind of hangs above the dash, or well, they'll put it right on top of the dash and then it's still like right in front of the windshield. Here in Minnesota now, if you were to do that, that would be illegal and you'll get pulled over. You can't even have dice hanging from your from your rear view mirror so this one has a 4.3 inch screen which is plenty for what I need to see I'm not watching TV or anything I haven't so. even opened this up yet or anything so I want to see what comes in the box alright so there it is we've got the actual monitor camera and the whole housing right here and all the hookups so and it doesn't I mean it's not a whole lot of stuff how bad can it be to put it in alright so after reading the directions it's really not going to be that hard of an install uh, a couple things to keep in mind you want to like I want to put this on the back upper part of the fifth wheel out there and it says you need to be two inches above or two inches below that running light so otherwise it can cause some problems with the light in the camera and everything like like that so that'll be easy enough what I'll do is I'll pull that center light since I'm going to pull power from that light so the camera will come on to have the camera on I will have to have my running lights on which is fine because at least then I know I'm not going to, it's not going to be on all the time draining the battery because I don't need it when I'm not driving. So I, I will pull the light itself and see if the wires go down or if they go up. I think it's better to have it above the light if possible if you've got enough room because since this is flat against the wall it's less obstructed view for the signal to go over the top of the trailer versus when it's down and it has to go more through the trailer. So I did notice that. Another thing is if you don't already have this bracket mounted like I did, I don't, uh, you need four screws to, uh, to put this on. It doesn't come with those screws. It says to go, it gives you the size and use self-tapping. I'm just going to use something I have here in the workshop, even if I have to pre-drill a little hole to put that on, of course, after you put in your gasket and everything like that. One thing that was pretty neat, I was reading, you know, like I said, fairly easy directions to follow. And it was talking about after it's all installed, you know, you're going to have to pair it so that the camera knows that the monitor, you know, they're paired together. And uh, you have to, once a light comes on, you've got to push a button or something for so many seconds. And I was thinking, how do you do that when you've got to run all the way to the back of the trailer 
to do it and you have to have the monitor hooked up to your power inside of the truck they make it super simple though because this which will you know hook into the power that actually hooks into the the trailer wiring itself with this little harness they make a thing right here that this will hook into the cigarette lighter or the power part and then you can just plug the camera in like that and then plug in the monitor like this and just sit in your truck and pair them prior to putting it on so that's really important because if I would not have read that part knowing me I would have installed the whole thing then figured that out and had to take it all down and do it again I'm not really sure that I'm going to have enough daylight this afternoon to get this all installed, but at least we can go into the truck and plug this in and get it paired so that part is finished. Okay, so I guess the first thing I'll do is plug this into the power point. I kind of wish that had a light on it. I kind of live by seeing the little light, but I guess I'll know once the monitor's on. Now I'm just going to plug the camera into this hookup. Like that. A little blue light comes on. We know it has power. Now I'm going to take and plug the monitor in. Wow, I guess that uh, camera already works. All right, so for me, looking at this, it seems like, well, it's already paired if it's working, but we'll go through what it says to do. It says ensure both the camera and monitor have power supplied, which they do. Press the power confirm button to turn on the monitor. Well, the monitor's already on. Press the menu button to bring up the menu. Press the up or down button to scroll through to get to pairing. I gotta push the power button to hit pair. Once this comes up, you have to go on the bottom of your camera and push this other button that's on the bottom for two seconds. One, two. It said okay. There's a little button on the bottom of the camera here. That's it. It's done. It shows up here how many bars, which of course it's full when it's this close. Looking at this, you get those lines on there. I don't know, you must... I suppose you could go back there and actually put a, something so you know how far back something is. So that's probably smart, but you could take those lines off also. All right, well, I'm running out of daylight for right now, so I'll have to pick this up tomorrow after work, and hopefully we can get the camera installed, and all the hard part is pretty much done right now. The rest should be pretty easy. All right, well, I'm out here the following afternoon. Kind of running out of daylight now again, too, but I undid the center light of these three, and the wires go up. It'll be easy for me to just come up here, drill a hole a couple inches up, and then just run the wires, and then I need to tie into these ones, the black and the red, and I'll have power to the actual camera. Well, I marked out where I wanted to do it. I would end up drilling it up here. The problem is when I put my finger up in here, I can't go. There's like a member that goes across here when they were building the, the trailer. And I'm not sure I can get a wire all the way down to here. So, but I can take and go this way. I'm much more open. So, and I see a lot of them when they're down here. I wanted to go on top because, you know, less for the signal to go, but I better start down here. And then if I don't get a signal, then worry about drilling a hole up here. Well, there I got the hole drilled. Now I just need to run the wires through here and up and then we'll attach into here. I have to make sure I get the right polarity going here and it doesn't tell you much when both of them coming out of the light are black but normally on uh, these trailers white will be your ground and uh, the green color here is going to be the power part of it so I'm going to do exactly that and hopefully it'll work right.
Now all I'm doing is I put the black, the negative, to the white, and now I'm going to put the red to the green, and I'll put the wire nuts back on, a little bit more black tape, and I'll tuck it all back in the hole. Just wanted to show you, I got the wire nuts back on, some new black tape. I did take this outer casing and split it down a little bit to get me a little bit more slack on the, the black and the red wire. I think it'll be a little bit easier to get in the hole when they're not like super tight like that. Well now the hard part is over. Now it's simply drilling these four little holes and putting the screws in so the camera goes over, hooking those two things up, and this part of it should be done. And there that one is, all installed. At least we know we did that part right, as long as the polarity is working the right way, and it should be. Well now all we should have to do is plug in the monitor and turn it on and we'll know if we succeeded or not. I tell you it would be a lot easier doing that if it wasn't 35 degrees out there right now. <laughs> Working with that wire was a little bit stiff and my fingers are a little chilly. It's always hard to kind of film another monitor, but that thing is working really good. And I don't know if you can see up here, full bars of service going all the way through that trailer. I'm not even hooked to the trailer. So, wow, that's going to be really nice when I'm driving just to know what's back there. Another nice thing, I can see where you'd like those lines maybe on there, because there's the ladder, which is probably about two feet away from the, the back of the fifth wheel. So if I turn the, I'm just trying to make this so you guys can see it. Can you see the red there? There we go. So yeah, the red is extremely close. I'd like to measure off how far back, like that stake right there that we have under the driveway for when you plow snow in the winter, how far back that is. And then I'd know exactly how far away anything was that was behind me. Okay, everyone. Well, thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you guys on the next video.